Hey guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. I'm at the shop uh, this evening. Well, it's just afternoon. We've just closed, had a really busy weekend. Before I go home, I want to get another mystery box of stuff out of my storeroom here, and I thought I'd take you along. Let's go to the storeroom. Now, last time we went out to the storeroom, I actually did a video on making a bench top, a workbench top, and some high shelving out of some scrap timber, well, a bed end and some doors. And I haven't filmed back here since, and that was oh, that was a while ago. So there hasn't really been any progress on the workbench area. As you can see, there's still stuff everywhere. I have been rummaging through looking for certain things. So some boxes have been removed. Uh, I can now see more of the clocks that I've got to deal with. Uh, part of a big collection I bought once, and I'm going to try and fix up most of them. They'll go home at some stage. Um, so let's stuck around here. There's a box that I want to get into, and I haven't even opened opened it so we'll share that experience together here's the workbench that i made but as you can see it's just got covered in clutter i need to get an area for those pigeonholes to go along that wall but to do that i have to move that big cabinet over there first and there's nowhere to put it so it's all a bit of a juggle um, the shelf that i put up above is proving useful for storing a bit of stuff but it's really hard to work in a room to create space when You've almost got to do everything sideways. But we'll battle on as best we can. So I have emptied all the bottom of that shelf section. Uh, that box there we're about to look in shortly. Uh, and the rest of these shelves, oh, there's some suitcases with some old paperwork I have to go through. And the top shelf's just all jars of hardware and things. So they will be stored in here, but I want to put those on that little pigeonhole thing up against this wall under the window. So I need to move this big shelf unit first. And the only place I can put it is in the center of this room between that shelf there and as I pan around that shelf there. So I have a little bit of an alcove here. Now I have emptied this, this was piled high. So I have got a lot of stuff out of this room and I'm discovering all this other stuff that's in here. So before we unbox, let's have a look at some of this cool stuff. There's some turntables. Uh, there's an equalizer, uh, a Pioneer equalizer. There's a, a pretty cool JVC amplifier from the 70s. It looks like a tape deck, uh, possibly a Kenwood CD player down there. There's a couple of vintage speakers in the middle here. There's some vintage cookware down below. Lots of car manuals and things. I bought uh, a whole big collection of car manuals. It was actually the contents of a garage, an old motor garage that closed down. And they're absolutely everywhere still. I did eBay a lot of them at the time, but there are shelves full of them here. There's a lot of service manuals for Nissans from the 60s. Uh, and as you can see, their shelves are just chockers. So there's some pretty good eBay stock here. I'm not gonna start sorting that out at the moment. I'm just gonna make a bit of room in the middle of this room to poke that big shelf. So if I spin around, Bear with me. Uh, you can now see this shelf that I've got to move so that I can set those pigeonholes up on the wall. Uh, okay, let's get this box out onto the counter and see what's in it. Okay, this has been in storage for a long time. It's very dusty. I have written on here um, something to do with eBay stuff and there's some stuff in here that I was going to use as a mystery object for another video, but never mind. I might have already done that. I don't remember. There, it looks like some books and there's some stuff wrapped up in paper. It's um, it's pretty dusty. A few spiderwebs. Uh, I remember this came from a, an old house, a very old house, to this estate that I cleaned up, a real cottage, and there was a lot of old stuff in it. I don't know if this is the old stuff or if this is just stuff I thought would be worth eBaying. Let's um, let's dive in and have a look. I always enjoy unwrapping old newspaper wrapped things and the dates. Well, it shouldn't be that old. 2008, that's probably when I wrapped it up. So what's that, about 14 years ago? 15 years? Okay, this is 1960s. Doesn't that scream 1960s to you? Uh, this is Scandinavian. I think it's Norwegian pottery. It's got a faint mark on it but very classic 60s, very collectible. I forget the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, Turi Design or something. Uh, it's got an FF trademark. I can't remember, it's a bit hard to read. That's a butter dish, a littered butter dish. 
and some of this 60s stuff can get pretty good money. I would just estimate about $50 for that, but I'd have to check eBay to see if it still sells well. But a cool piece for the shop if we don't want to eBay it. All right, there are some books in here too, but let's unwrap the paper ones. And this one feels like a jug. Oh, it's the same design. Oh, it's a, is it a teapot? Coffee pot. There's no lid. That's unfortunate, but it is a coffee pot, the same design. Uh, that's easier to read. Uh, Turi designed Tor Viking made in Norway. And then an FF, which I'm not sure what stands for. I'll give you a bit of a look at that mark. You can see that. So classic retro 60s. And as I said, it's quite collectible from memory. With any sort of luck, we might have the lid for that coffee pot in here. Generally, with these things, coffee pots are usually much taller, whereas the teapots are much more squat. So I would call that a coffee pot, but maybe in some places you would have tea in it. Uh -huh. Now, I had one of these recently. I was going to hold one over for a mystery object video. A few of you guessed what it was anyway. Uh, so I won't actually name this one either in case I haven't done that mystery video yet. Heavy piece of glass. And I think from what I read on the box, there's more of those in here. There's another one. They normally come in a set of four. This is a bit lighter, so this will be something different. Oh, it's possibly the top to the coffee pot. Yes, it is. All right, now, again, I haven't looked up prices of this stuff for a long time. Uh, I would expect that's probably a $50 to $60 item, but I will check that before this video is out. Uh, given that the china is all the same design, yes, that's another piece. That's a, a milk jug or a creamer. I wonder if we're going to have the sugar bowl in here. I don't think that's the sugar bowl. I would have called that a butter dish. But that's a, a milk jug. And I think this is another amber glass piece. Yep, so we've got three of those. I think that's all we've got. And the rest of the box is just books. So let's go through the books quickly. I haven't done many videos on books. Uh, Matheson's Australian Sawmillers Log and Timber Ready Reckoner. And it's just a whole heap of charts for dimensions, probably for calculations of um, circumference of a log and the number of feet of timber you can get out of it, the cubic feet. Yeah, it's just a, a chart for um, calculating timbers. We have cement and concrete for the handyman. Uh, mm. These books are probably 1950s or so. They certainly look that style. A 1954, yep. Diesel maintenance. This could be a little bit older. It was 10 shillings. It's an English book. And that's 1943. So World War II era diesel maintenance. I find mechanical books like this sell very, very well. Um, as far as books go, you're much better picking up boxes of books that are mechanically inclined or more instructional books rather than novels. There's so little value in novels these days. I mean, there's going to be some gems amongst them, but most novels aren't worth hardly anything. 1941 Machine Shop Work. That's uh, quite a nice looking book. Really good condition. Great information in there. Yeah, I'd have to check eBay to see prices, but I'd think those would be at least $10 each. We have a Honda 75 Twin outboard motor owner's manual. Might have some value too. How to run a lathe, volume one. I am hoping to get a lathe, but I think this information might be a little bit outdated. Uh, 1940s again. Pretty good condition. 
Yeah, that's actually really good. So some of these might do really well on eBay. The good thing about selling books is that they're very easy to post. Oregon Saw Chain, I used to sell Oregon Chainsaw Chain when I had my small engine business. So that's a much more recent book. And I do have to do some more videos on chainsaws. An introduction to the small lathe. McPherson's were a big machinery uh, supply company in Australia. Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, Perth. This would be 1950s again. And some of the early, oh, that's some great imagery there of the old lathes and workshop tools. Very nice piece. <clears throat> All right, what have we got? We've got JAP or JAP engine book. It's a, for model 2A. There's a good picture of the engine. I've had some of those engines. I forget what JAP stood for. Uh, it was someone's initials from memory. Uh, and I think they were English. JAP. I'd have to look it up. Some of you guys might know. So that may have uh, really good eBay value as well for someone that's got an old engine like this and wants to book for it. Getting the most from your drill press, getting the most from your abrasive tools, getting the most out of your lathe, wood turning, metal turning. These would be 50s again, great reference books. Uh, possibly American, as in they're in 25 cents, but it's these would be earlier than when Australia... Uh, went decimal. Uh, printed in USA, yeah. So some cool, a cool set of books there. We have a Whirlwind Home Gardener. It's a rotary hoe. These usually had a Briggs and Stratton engine on them. This is probably 1970s, I would imagine. So it's just the owner's um, booklet that you got when you purchased one new. And these things can bring pretty good money especially as the equipment gets older and people start collecting the equipment they like to have the books that went with it instruction book for the standard 8 and 10 saloon standard motor company so that's for a car very nice so i don't know how much value that would have it depends on how collectible the cars are and this looks like a lubrication chart for the same book so it must have come out of the back of it or maybe that's the back cover i think it is we're missing the front cover a prefect instruction book so that's the ford prefect it's got how to install piston rings the books are a little rough but still will have a market they're going to be at least five to ten dollars in the shop but some of them may well do much better on ebay Pocket service guide for Mercury outboard motors. Looks 50s, handies, uh, McPherson's handyman's guide. And there's a lot of just general information there. And there's some notes on the back. We have a Honda general purpose engine, the G40, G40R owner's manual. So that would be getting back to the 70s. A Honda Rotary mower, um, perhaps not quite as old, 1980s that one. And a Mercury outboard motor, possibly a similar age, maybe 70s. Oh, 1966, there we go. What else? There's another handful of books in here, and that empties the box. So not terribly exciting, but I do like all these manuals. 1967, Evinrude outboard motor, owner's manual. It's good to find them where they're in pretty good condition. Sometimes they end up in sheds and they get wet or they get mice through them or silverfish can damage the old paperwork. These are pretty good, actually. We have a Mercedes-Benz owner's manuals in its plastic booklet. I don't know what year. Maintenance, medium and heavy trucks. Doesn't look quite as old, this one. Probably 1980s. Have to check eBay to see if it's going to have any interest. We'll leave those together for now. Uh, Turner. Turner manufactured ha uh, hardware like handles, doorknobs, uh, cupboard hardware. Oh, they also had lawnmowers. Setting up your lawnmower. 
Yep, so this is a Turner mower. But the booklet's starting to fall apart a bit. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to have a lot of value, but people do collect the old lawnmowers as they collect chainsaws. Uh, Echo chainsaw instruction booklet, CS601. I've actually done a bit of work on those in my time, but that would be a 1970s model before you had the emergency chain brake. Yeah, that's in good, good condition, that one. And a parts catalogue for the Echo Chainsaw, the same model, with an exploded view breakdown of all the parts. Very cool. Power Chainsaw is still O2OAV. So that's an earlier looking steel chainsaw. Again, there's no chain break on it, so definitely 70s or earlier. Probably 60s, this one. It's the old steel logo. Oh yeah, they're going to have some collectible value for sure. And another steel one, an earlier steel. That has got a chain break, so that must have been in the, into the 70s, that one. Okay, guys, let's get back to this uh, box lot of books and things and just see what value we've got. I've been away last week, I was at the farm, so I need to get back and finish sorting this out. So I've priced all the manuals, I've priced all the books, I've priced the china, let's have a look. And I guess I can spill the beans on what these things are now because I've written it on my list. They are piano insulators, I was going to hold them as a mystery object item. There should be four, and the idea is to sit your heavy piano up on top of them. The casters rest in the bowl there, stops the piano rolling around on timber floors. And I believe that it has an insulation quality uh, for the help with the sound quality of the piano. I was told that years ago. I've never been able to confirm it uh, as to where that's why they're called piano insulators. But uh, I believe the sound is a bit different when it's up on glass and not just on the floor. If you know anything about that and can confirm or deny that story, please put a comment below. The Norwegian pottery I've priced a little lower than what I was suggesting earlier. It doesn't seem to bring on eBay what it used to. I know it used to bring really good dollars. I sold a piece in the hundreds one time years ago. I put 40 on the coffee pot. I put 30 on the butter dish and I put 20 on the creamer jug. Um, Christine tried her hardest to, um, to send this stuff to the other dimension. She walked past a box that this was packed in last week while I was away or actually just before I went away and it crashed to the concrete floor, but good on the Norwegians. They made good pottery. There wasn't even a chip. We were pretty amazed, actually. Anyway, that's what we've done with that. I have priced out all the booklets and the brochures and put them in a big folder here, which is called Early Engine and Machinery Ephemera. Ephemera meaning paperwork that wasn't really designed as a collectible and generally got thrown away. Uh, so I've priced all these out at five to ten dollars each there wasn't any that i was definitely going to ebay some could have done all right but with most of these ones i found examples online and there was enough of them online to indicate to me that they weren't going to bring a really good price at auction uh, a couple of them aren't in very good condition either which makes a fair difference to price uh, some were missing covers so i've just gone five ten on some of them and customers love flicking through these books uh, so I put 10 on that one. I think the best in this book was 15 I put on something. Uh, oh, it was this last one, this JAP engine, which I was trying to remember the brand, and it actually is initials or a name, JA Prestwich Industries, which was an English company, so that's where JAP came from. So they add up to quite a bit because we've got a good volume there, and also some of the books. Uh, the best book, I think, was the Machine Shop Work book, 1941, uh, a great reference and some really good graphics in there. I think someone will see value in that book. Uh, tens, fives. Uh, so there you go. I checked them all on eBay and I could find examples of just about everything. My rule of thumb when deciding whether to eBay something is if you can't find any examples online, there's a chance that's rare and there's a chance that it might bring big money. Uh, so brings us to the notepad. Uh, you can see the adjusted prices there and have a look at how those books and manuals multiplied out, $240. Uh, and even if we sell, say, half of them, we're going to do pretty well out of this box lot. So we'll add that together. Uh, what have we got? 30, 60, 100, 120, $360. Let me write that down. 
Not a bad potential return from a small dusty box in my storeroom. I can now put all this stuff in the shop. It gets it out of the storeroom. It gives me some interesting stock for the shop. Happy days for everyone. So thanks for watching guys. Another box processed, another bit of space reclaimed in my storage room at the shop. Remembering I'm still doing one item or at least one box lot from my emergency storage shed at home each week in between my repair jobs, my trips to the farm and getting something out of here as well. So hope you're enjoying the content. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. I might go and have a coffee.